Good morning. It is Friday, the 13th of October, and I am servicing for the first time an NTI uh, 200. I forget the exact model number, but it'll be in the uh, title for the video. Uh, TX151, and very similar to a Burnham Alpine, and I'm going to show you uh, briefly everything that I've been doing so far and what I'll be doing. <laughs> So here's the boiler, here's the heat exchanger. This fresh air inlet piping, the gray piping, connected from the white to right here. I just undid this uh, coupling and pulled that out, as well as turned the gas off, took our gas off from here up to here, and disconnected our flame sensor and our ignition wires and all the other wiring going to the various components pulled out our flame sensor and igniter which you can see here the igniter is in some really desperate need of a cleaning but i undid these bolts at the top of the heat exchanger and i don't know that i will be able to do this one-handedly but i'm going to be pulling off this plate in its entirety so we can get full access to and clean it and it looks like I will be able to do this one-handed. This is a fairly new boiler. It has been installed for two years, according to the customer. And somebody did service on it last year. But she doesn't know what they actually did. Uh, but you can see, if you're familiar with the Alpine, it looks just like it. And we got to clean up all the little crusties and in between all of these tubes in here to uh, make sure that it's burning properly and can exchange the heat properly. So I'm going to get started with just giving this a brush with the nylon bristle brush because you can't use metal. And then I'll see how clear all the ports are with a plastic card that will just slide in between and probably rinse it out. Um, doesn't look terrible, but we'll see. So I got my nylon brush and I'm just gonna go around it, gently brush it off. And I know they make a special tool for this, but I don't have it yet. Probably be ordering it today. But for now, this works fine. You can see all the dust that's uh, coming apart out of here. I think the camera's picking it up. And I can actually feel that it is going uh, pretty deep in there. So I don't think that they're really going to be very clogged. But I'll be shoving a card in through it just in case. And you do have to be careful near this rear... Uh, refractory. I forget what they call it. They don't call it that, but that's what Burnham calls it. Because if you start scratching that up, it just disintegrates. And you're not supposed to get it wet either. Because the same thing happens where it totally disintegrates. And let's see if I had a card in here. It does not look like it. Okay, so I have a card here, and what you're doing is shoving it in between the tubes, making sure it passes through clearly, and you can see like right here, there's a pin going through, so you can't get it all the way, but there are places where you can't, just because that's how it's made, but where you can, make sure it goes in nice and easily, and I'll do this for every tube, every section, all around, but you can see it's, I'm having no trouble getting it into all of them. So, fairly clean. And before I actually introduce any water to rinse it off well, I am going to vacuum up any loose debris. And I do have a brush for that for my shop vac. It's just the Milwaukee shop vac, cordless. But uh, it's gonna be loud, I'll just show you.
And then for uh, the wet portion, I'm gonna use this water, just a low flow, and scrub all around with the water flowing to try to loosen up any hardened debris. And that's all gonna drain right out into this uh, neutralizing pump, which I did make sure is still powered on because the boiler's powered off. And then I'll clean out that trap afterwards. And we got it all rinsed out and scrubbed. You can see discoloration, but it's not actual like solids. Uh, if it were dirtier and not as brand new, I would use what they recommend vinegar and let vinegar sit on it and then clean it again. But I don't want to introduce chemicals to it yet because uh, you don't want to wear away at the plastics or anything until not the plastics, but the metals until you really need to. And here's that condensate trap, which I guess this is why they want you to clean it out, because it's pretty uh, gross. But I'll pull all this apart and get it nice and clean. Okay, so I got that as clean as I could. It's stained, but there's no debris in it. And there was an extra gasket thrown in there. I don't know who did that, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to clean out this condensate uh neutralizer pump and replace that media on the inside. Okay, so all I did was I uh, unplugged the pump and I'm resting it in this bucket where, because it's a little dirty, that way it doesn't uh, drip water everywhere. I'll take this outside, clean it out, and uh, replace that media. Okay, and this isn't really necessary, but I want the customer to look at it and see that it's clean. Because it's really the only dirty thing sitting in that boiler room and it looks gross, so. I'm just gonna spray it down with spray nine and rub all the brown gunk out with a dirty towel. This one. And uh, then I'll replace the media, which is right back here. Uh oh, looks like my, looks like my vacuum pump is leaking oil. That's annoying. But, uh, yeah, here's the neutralizing media, big box of it, uh, limestone, and the, uh, stuff, the white powder stuff. I don't know what it's called, but it's a heavy box. I think it's 80 pounds. And there, it's not perfect, but you'll see that it's much cleaner. It's really not important, it's just to make it look uh, a little bit nicer. I'm just dumping in the rocks. And then after that I'll sprinkle some of this stuff on top. This, I think actually it has the label on it. Neutralizing Media NM25 Axiom. So. And there, there's the rocks, sprinkled the stuff on top, kind of tapped it all to settle in, and I'll put this back. And for this assembly on a Burnham, you would take it completely apart and like go through the swirl plate and everything, but they don't uh, list that as something to do in their manual. But there's also no uh, swirl plate here, it looks like it's just integrated to the metal uh, for the gas valve, so... That's kind of nice that you don't have a bunch of plastic components right here to worry about that deteriorate over time. Um, I installed it all back together and then I ran water into the boiler to prime the trap and make sure that this discharged, which it did. And um, now I can start with the reassembly and then testing everything. And I got these about as clean as I'm going to be able to get them. They're a little bit uh, tough to clean because of all the angles, but definitely a lot better. So I'll get these put back in there and uh, rehook up the gas and everything. Okay, so I just uh, jumped out of zone and I cycled the boiler on. Um, I just put it into uh, installer menu. But let's see if what happens if I go back. Hold reset button to return to main screen. And so you've got 20 PSI, 109 degrees. I have my Testo set up. 
so I can do a combustion analysis test. Let's see if I could put that right there. And move this out of the way. Pull off our exhaust cap and put it in there fairly centered. And I'll monitor it and I'll see what we need to be compared to where we're at. Look at how they mounted this boiler too. How crooked it is. Why on earth would they do that? It's bizarre. They didn't even level it. And here I'm just going one by one, making sure that all our zones supply and return properly. Printed out that combustion test. I have to go outside to look up what they need to be because I don't have any service down here, but I have a feeling it's gonna be around where it needs to be. I'd like to see less uh, carbon monoxide, but I have a feeling that this is where they're gonna want it. I had a similar thing recently with another style boiler where carbon monoxide is, it, it's not crazy high, but that's where they want to leave it, so. Okay, so all finished up. Valves are labeled. Boiler's got the sticker. Tagged it. Combustion analysis results on the side. Everything is shut down and running well. Pressure stayed okay the whole time, 15 PSI. So we are all set here. Thank you.